Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today. My name is Dale Schmidt. I'm the Dodge County Sheriff and the Vice President of the Dodge County Executive Law Enforcement Association. Um, we, uh, we will start the, this presentation today with our invocation uh, by Chaplain Donald Steinberg of Emanuel Lutheran Church in Reeseville. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus, you have shown us that no one has greater love than the one who, like Jesus did, gives up his or her life so that others may live. Today we give you thanks for all law enforcement officers who sacrificed their lives in the line of duty so that the people they promised to serve and protect would live. We thank you for their selfless examples of courage and valor, and we ask you to lead and equip us to live in ways that honor their memories. Bless and keep all who grieve the loss of their fallen family members, their partners, their friends. Wipe away the tears from their eyes and heal their wounds. And bless and keep in your care all those who answer the call of duty this day and return them home at the end of their watch. We bring this prayer to you, dear Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we gather here today, we will be remembering those individuals who have been lost in the line of duty here in Dodge County. But we don't want to forget about the law enforcement officers that we lose each and every day across our country. You may not be aware of this, but we have lost 17 law enforcement officers in the line of duty already just here in 2022. About half of those are felonious assaults on law enforcement officers. Four of them are unprovoked attacks on law enforcement officers. And before we bring our keynote speaker up here to talk to you today, I want to take a moment and thank all of you who are in uniform, out of uniform, working in public service, who are out there protecting and serving our citizens each and every day for the risk to you, yourself, and your family going out there every day to protect those individuals. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. We are a, truly a team working in, a, in an era which is, is very difficult for all of us to live in. And we do have the support of our local community here, but that isn't the same everywhere. And we always have to have our head on a swivel as we're making a routine traffic stop or investigating a domestic incident. I always recall the first law enforcement funeral that I went to, Deputy Bruce Williams from the Green Lake County Sheriff's Office. I interned with him. And shortly after interning with him, I was faced with going to his funeral after he was shot down at a domestic incident. And I think about people like Trevor Casper, who lost his life in another neighboring county, a true hero who had already taken the fatal shot and yet still was able to take down the suspect who was firing at him, protecting the citizens. And one of his first days on solo patrol, a true hero in my book and in all of our books. Uh, and and uh, without further ado, I'd like to present our keynote speaker to talk a little bit more about that, uh, Fond du Lac County District Attorney Eric Tony. Thank you, Sheriff. And I, I can't tell you what it, a privilege and an honor it is to be here with all of you today. I get the opportunity to talk at, at a lot of different places, but this is special to be here for a lot of reasons. I'm the District Attorney in Fond du Lac County, but my dad spent over 30 years as a police officer and my entire life until he retired in 2013 that's what i've known that blue line family i've never we've got a lot of law enforcement here current and former i've never walked a day in your shoes but i've seen the sacrifices and service that my dad made throughout his career missing family events sporting events holidays that you're all currently doing and you do it because you care about our communities and the general public doesn't always see that the stress that you go through day in and day out and we're here during police week to honor the service and sacrifice of those that have made that ultimate sacrifice but we're also here to honor the sacrifices that you make every day that your families make every day so that you can help keep our communities safe and Sheriff Schmidt was talking about uh, Trevor Casper. And in Fond du Lac County, since 2011, we've lost 
three officers in the line of duty. And you know, on March 20th of 2011, I didn't know if my dad was alive. We had two police officers shot that morning and I couldn't get a hold of my dad. And I saw the reports of one officer, Officer Craig Burkholz, that I later learned shot and killed when he was trying to aid Officer Ryan Williams, who had been shot. And that thought that you go through of praying for the best and hoping. And my now stepmom, who's a retired detective, got a hold of me and she told me the best lie I've ever been told. Your dad's fine, he's not working. And she lied because my dad was working that morning. He did respond to that scene and I'm fortunate that my dad made it home. I still get to say I love you because Craig's family never gets that opportunity. And when you say I love you to your spouse or your family, that means something different than almost anyone else when they say that because we know what that sacrifice could be that you're all willing to make. And as Sheriff Schmidt was talking about Trooper Casper, 21 years old, first day on his own after field training. And you would have never known it was Trevor's first day based on how he responded to somebody that had robbed a bank in Marinette County and murdered someone else. And Trevor was waiting for backup to arrive as he was following this vehicle into the city of Fond du Lac. And that individual must have recognized what was going on because he turned around and opened fire on Trevor while he was still in his squad car. And Trevor was struck at least once in his squad. He could have hit the gas and saved his life that day. But he did what I think each and every one of you would do. He stopped because he knew that threat was a danger to our community. And he got out. And that's when he was fatally wounded. But as the sheriff said, he stayed in the fight. And he ended the threat that day. And what he did in those 17 seconds, he did more than most of us will do in a lifetime. But I know that you will all do if the need arises. And Trevor Casper gave his life for our community and saved lives of people that he would never meet. And you're all doing that day in and day out, saving lives. You're having an impact on people in our communities that you'll never even realize how you treated them with kindness and dignity, the comment that you made, the impact that that will change their life, the things that you do day in and day out and you're not going to get a thank you, you're not going to get a pat on the back. Sometimes you might, but never enough. And we honor your service and sacrifice as well. And I, as I said before, I couldn't be more honored to be here today. And, and Sheriff Schmidt told me that this will go on as long as I talk, and so I've got a few more pages that I want to go through here. Um, but I want you to know something, because I've we've seen the news over the past few years where law enforcement at times it feels like you're under attack your backs have been against the wall and i want to tell you something as i've traveled wisconsin you are respected you are appreciated and you are loved by this state i've seen it all across wisconsin regardless of what you may see in the media you are loved you are appreciated and we respect and support you and I want you to know that from the bottom of my heart, that that is what I have seen across Wisconsin. And that is the character of our state. And I can't think of anybody or anyone that is the reflection of that character than you. Because you would give your life for those that you may never know so that others can go home safe. That's what I've seen in Fond du Lac County as a district attorney. That's what I've seen as the kid of a cop. and. I understand the challenges we have for recruitment and retention and you are that thin blue line and I just want to thank you for the bottom of my heart not just the officers here but any of the family and friends because you're part of that journey as well and those officers in your lives are going to lean on you for support and the incredible things that they do the things that they experience, whether it's being punched, kicked, spit at, someone threatens to kill them, threatens to kill their family. And that's just a Monday. And then the next call, they have to go on 
to be someone's friend, neighbor, counselor, medical professional. We don't pay and give you enough for what you give back to us. And what I can say is thank you. We appreciate you, we love you, and we respect you, and we've got your back. And thank you so much for all that you do and that I know you will do. And thank you for your service. Thank you, Eric Coney. Uh, I really do appreciate him taking time out of his busy schedule to come be here with us today. Um, he is a true testament that, uh, well, we don't always agree, our prosecutors, um, Eric Coney, Kurt Klomberg, they also are there with us, stand with us in, in the fight against the, uh, the criminals that uh, we face every day. Um, and so, so thank you for your, for your remarks here today. Now I'd like to take a few moments, and I will not be able to give the same kind of, uh, of, of presentation that Chief Adamson has done for us for so many years. But I want to take a moment to uh, recognize those individuals who are honored here at the Dodge County Law Enforcement Memorial. Starting with Marshal William Gibson from the Horicon Police Department. Marshal Gibson was shot and killed while placing a prisoner in a cell. His end of watch was on October 19, 19 1882. Officer Hugo Lisco of the Dodge County Sheriff's Office died the day after his motorcycle collided with a motor vehicle. His end of watch, September 27, 1926. Officer Kurt Bentz of the Dodge County Sheriff's Office died after a truck turned into his path, uh, into the path of his motorcycle. His end of watch, May 8, 1936. Chief Charles Liebno, Sr., from the Horicon Police Department, died in a family disturbance after being shot by a suspect who was involved in that disturbance. His end of watch, June 2nd, 1941. Guard Davis, David Davies from Central State Hospital of the Department of Corrections. He was murdered by an inmate while in the wood shop. His end of watch, December 10th, 1945. Sheriff Herbert Schwantes of the Dodge County Sheriff's Office. He died of a heart attack in the line of duty. His end of watch, January 5th, 1954. Detective Donley Dye of the Dodge County Sheriff's Office. Died of a heart attack in the line of duty. His end of watch, June 26th, 1978. Chief Gene Zengel of the Mayville Police Department. Died of a heart attack in the line of duty. His end of watch, February 14th, 1985. Officer Gary Moss of the Yuma, Arizona Police Department. Officer Moss was a resident here in Dodge County, grew up in Dodge County, and while working for the Yuma, Arizona Police Department, was killed by two armed fugitives who were wanted for murder. His end of watch, April 9th, 1986. Captain Thomas Bain, the Burke Center of the Department of Corrections, killed in an automobile crash while traveling between work sites. His end of watch, August 17, 1994. Deputy Sung Bang, is a, from the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office. He's a helicopter pilot who was crashed, who crashed in, southeast Wisconsin, in Southeast Dodge County while searching for a homicide sus suspect uh, in, in Sauk County. His end of watch, August 17, 2000. Deputy Ralph Zilka, also from the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office, was a flight observer in that same helicopter that crashed in Southeast Dodge County, returning from searching for a homicide suspect in Sauk County. After remember that remembering those fallen individuals, we'll now give our attention to our honor guard. Prepare fire rifle volley. Support. Arm. Ready. Aim. Fire. Ready. Aim. Fire. Ready. Aim. Fire. Support. Arm.
like to thank everybody for coming to our memorial ceremony here this morning. I certainly want to take time to thank our honor guards today from the Beaver Dam Police Department, the Department of Corrections, and the Dodge County Sheriff's Office. Thank you for honoring those fallen members with your service here today. I want to thank uh, Eric Tony for taking time out of his schedule to, uh, to come in to uh, present to us here today, and for all of you for being here to help us honor those who have fallen here in Dodge County. Following our ceremony, you are all invited to a lunch in the basement of the administration building. Uh, again, thank you for coming. I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Chaplain Steinberg for a closing benediction. Once again, we join our hearts to pray. Oh Lord, we give you thanks for all the men and women of law enforcement on every level. We ask you to watch over them and keep them in your care as every time they leave home for their tour of duty, they do so in the awareness that they may not return home at the end of their watch. We thank you for the selflessness and dedication and the care and concern for others that motivates them to serve and protect us despite the sacrifices they must make, even, including even making the ultimate sacrifice if necessary. We give you thanks for all those who have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we may live our lives in safety. Be the constant companion of all for whom a day and time such as this day and this time bring memories of loved ones whose lives have been cut short by senseless acts of violence. Soothe their sorrow by cheering them with the assurance that even as they died to protect us, Jesus lived and died and rose again to protect them from being victims of death. For they now live with you in heaven where they know eternal pleasures forevermore. Give all who grieve the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. We pray for your divine intervention to bring peace to those communities where there is violence. Restore respect and value for each human life. We commit to your care in keeping every law enforcement officer who serves us today. Enable them to keep our community safe places to live and work. Grant them your unending strength and courage in their daily assignments. Into your loving care we commend them. Send your holy angels to be with them so that no enemy will have power over them. Re reunite them with their families when their time of duty has ended. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who saves us all from sin and death. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord look upon you with his favor and give to all of you his eternal peace. Amen. Thank you for coming again and this concludes our ceremony for today. Have a good day.